Hi and welcome to our video for 22.2 Organic Chemistry 2. So this is a continuation of the other organic chemistry video. Uh, in this one we're going to talk about some other different types of compounds and a couple of reactions. Most of the stuff is on the reference table, but the reactions aren't, so those you're going to have to memorize. Okay, so what makes organic molecules what they are are things called functional groups. Okay, and their properties depend on these functional groups. So you have a table R on your reference table is going to tell you about a lot of the different kinds of functional groups. And as we go through each slide, we're going to look at usually like one or two different functional groups on each. So the first one we're going to look at are halides. And in that case, you're going to have one or more hydrogens have been replaced with one of the halogens. Remember the halogens are group 17. Okay, So let's say you have something like a like this, where you have two carbons double bonded, or two hydrogens. Okay, and right, this is going to be ethene, and we break one of these double bonds. Okay, so now here, carbon attached to three hydrogens, but this carbon is attached to a bromine, for example. Okay, this would be a halide, and it would be bromo the bromine, ethane. And it's ethane, not ethene, now because we broke one of the double bonds. You can also do something like, you know, get three carbon chain going for a propane, and add like a chlorine, and then all the rest of these hydrogens, so H, 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 H. I'm going to stop drawing them in the interest of time. So this would be chloropropane. <laughs> okay. Another kind are alcohols. In that case, you have one of the uh, one or more of the H's replaced with an OH. And when we name alcohols, the suffix, the N, is going to be OL. Very simple. So let's say we have a single carbon for meth, methane. Right, CH three, O H, methane changes to methanol. Okay, so let's say you have two carbons, H H H H H O H, two carbons, eth anol. So the ethane changes to ethanol. Now when we look at the table R. The R here is going to represent the carbon chain. Okay, So for ethanol, the R are just two carbons. For methanol, the R is one carbon. Okay, For here, the R is one, two, three carbons. For here, the R also one, two, three carbons and the OH is the OH. So what we have to start really recognizing is the functional groups when we look at the molecules. Okay, so continuing. Next one is ethers and we can see here it's two carbon chains joined by an oxygen and the suffix for the name is going to be ether and to name it, right? if we look at the example here, they have a methyl group, an oxygen, and two carbons, so that's an ethyl group, so it's methyl, ethyl, ether. We name it ether. Uh, let's see, you could go with some other examples. Let's say we had carbon, oxygen, carbon, each one of these with all their hydrogens. Right, this would be a methyl. This would be another methyl. So we're not going to say methyl methyl. Instead, we say di methyl for two, ether, and so on and so forth. All right. So next we have aldehydes and ketones. We kind of look at those together. 
right? Both of these have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, okay? An aldehyde, it has it at the end, and the suffix is anal, so here, carbon, 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 right? So we go C, 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 double bonded to an O, and the rest H's, all right? One, two, three, so it's prop anal. So instead of propanol, like it would have been from an alcohol, it's propanal when it's an aldehyde. The ketone, the oxygen is somewhere in the middle. So if we say, you know, C, 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 double bonded to an oxygen here, fill out all the rest of our hydrogens. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, that would be pent unknown because it ends with unknown, all right? So this would be pentanone. And we also have to say which carbon it's attached to. Is it attached to carbon one, two, three, four, or five? And here it's attached to carbon three, so it's three pentanone. The three tells us which carbon it's attached to. All right, so next we're gonna look at organic acids. And that's going to have a COOH. But the COOH isn't all lined up like that. And so let's say we have C, okay, double bonded to an O, then single bonded to another O with a hydrogen. Okay, and it's attached to your R or however other many carbons is attached to, right? And it's an organic acid, and it's a weak acid, so it's a weak electrolyte. And these are actually gonna be uh, water-soluble because acids are water-soluble. The suffix, when you name it, is gonna be anoic acid. So you pretty much count the carbon, so let's say we have C, 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 five carbons, double bonded to an O, OH, fill out all the hydrogens, Okay, It'd be one, two, three, four, five, pent anoic acid. Back in the day, we referred to these as carboxylic acids, so you might hear me say that instead of organic acids sometimes. That's the same thing, carboxylic acid. Okay, it's a name that I uh, grew up using for these. All right, esters, and ester is also gonna have a double bonded to the O with another single bond, but it's gonna be in the middle. So let's imagine we took this H from an organic acid and replaced it with more carbons going on, okay? So if we have something like, let's see, got a uh, C. C, C, double bonded to an O, single bonded to an O, C, C, and fill out all the hydrogens, okay? Uh, P, that would be, here we have two, so that would be propano8 with an ethyl group attached, so it would be ethyl propano8. Just like this one here is methyl propanoate, because you have the longest carbon chain, one, two, three, making it propanoate, and there's a single carbon group attached to it, making it methyl. Uh, we're going to look at this when we talk about reactions, but you have to remember this, that it is formed, esters are formed by esterification, and we'll see that it's, uh, yeah, you'll see what it is in a little bit. And the suffix, the naming is anoate. Okay, next. Here, you have amines and amides. You might uh, remember hearing a little bit about these when you were in biology. So an amine is going to have an N attached somewhere. So it's kind of like replacing uh, one or more of the H's in an NH3 with an alkyl group. 
and the suffix is anamine. So here if you have C, 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 N, right? H2, H, H, because the nitrogen is going to have three bonds. Each of the carbons have a total of four. Okay? And the N is attached to the first carbon, because it doesn't matter which side we start counting from. We're just going to go with the lowest number. So it's one, prop, because there's three, anamine. Add another carbon, and it would be one butanamine. Next, we have amides. We can see down here, there's one little change instead of the carbon being attached to the uh, nitrogen only. It's also going to have a double bonded oxygen. So it's kind of like replacing the OH, right? We have a C, double bonded oxygen, OH, in an organic acid with an NH2. And the suffix is anamide. So if we have C, 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 four carbons, NH2, O, M E P B, so but, what? but anamide would be this amide. Okay, so those are the different functional groups, and like I said earlier, the beauty is they are all on the reference table. <clears throat> now we're going to look at some organic reactions. And first one we're going to look at is substitution. Very, very simple. It's a replacement reaction, and we're usually replacing a hydrogen. So if you have C, 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 and all those hydrogens, and we replace one hydrogen with something, let's say we replace one with a fluorine, okay, that would be a substitution reaction where we substitute something for the else, something for something else. So this would be fluoro, fluoro, and the P, propane. And the fluorine is attached to the first carbon, so it would be one fluoropropane. So we replace something, it's substitution. An addition is when we add something, usually at a double or triple bond. So we end up breaking a triple or a double bond to add something. So let's see, say we have ethene, right, kind of like we did earlier. And some fluorine comes in and wants to join the party. It's going to cause one of these double bonds to break, leaving us room for two more somethings. All right, we could add hydrogens. Well, let's say we add chlorines. Okay, now we have two chlorines, so it's dichloro, two carbons, ethane, and chlorine is attached to carbon number one and to carbon number two, so one comma two dichloro ethane. Yeah, I know it's a lot of work uh, naming all of these. Okay, getting there. Polymerization. Polymerization is formed by opening up double bonds and making long chains. If you remember from biology, a polymer is going to usually have a longer chain. So we're taking shorter organic molecules and putting them together to make longer chains. All right, so you have a bunch of ethanes. We break up these double bonds and add them all together and end up with a longer chain. Okay, and then just fill in all the hydrogens. Okay, that would be polymerization, making that longer chain. Another one is fermentation, and that involves making ethanol, ethyl alcohol, from sugar, and yeast do the work. The, so you have sugar, okay, uh, glucose for example, and you add some yeast, it's got to be in a water solution usually, and it's going to make ethanol and carbon dioxide. So you have to remember, fermentation takes sugar to make ethanol 
and carbon dioxide. All right, so the, earlier I said, all right, we'll talk about esterification in a little bit because uh, I wanted you to see the picture. Esterification is a reaction between an organic acid, so here's our organic acid, here's ethanoic acid, for example, and an alcohol, here's ethanol. And what happens is it's a dehydration kind of reaction where the OH on the end of the organic acid breaks off and the hydrogen on the end of the alcohol breaks off and they form water, okay, and our ester. Remember, the ester is going to have an R, oh, have an R, so let's see, double bonded to an O, bonded to another O, to another R. So here's our first R, joined to a C, that's double bonded to an O, joined to an O, joined to our other R. And we'll look at uh, a bunch more examples of these in class. All right, so the one we already started memorizing when we did acid and bases is saponification. It's making soap. That's what you really have to remember about saponification. And to make it, it's a reaction between an ester and a strong base. Okay, our final one you already know. It's combustion. All right, and that's some sort of hydrocarbon burning with oxygen. All right, so it's burning. And the byproducts are CO2 and H2O. All right, that brings us to the end of 22.2. As always, all right, if you have trouble with stuff, go back, watch it again. But these are mostly memorization things, and you do need to take some time before coming back to class, look over your notes to uh, get them in order and memorize a lot of the reaction terms.